Okay, this video is about projectiles at an angle. If you remember from our last video that a uh, projectile is something uh, that is launched that has only gravity affecting it. So now we're going to do these things at an angle, which means we're going to have to do a little bit of trig. So we're just going to jump right into an example and kind of talk through the ideas behind it. So here we have a velocity of 100 meters per second of something that's going to be launched at a 30 degree angle. And we have to try to determine the displacement in the x-direction and the displacement in the y-direction. So we're looking for how far, and then we're going to look for how high it goes. All right, so we're going to look at this from two different views. We're going to look at it from the front view. So this is as if the ball goes straight up and comes straight back down, and that's all in the y direction. So if we're looking at it from the front, line, in line with it. We know that gravity is acting on it at 10 meters per second squared down. And since this is a 30 degree angle, we can find the velocity in the y direction by doing trig and do uh, the hypotenuse times the sine of the angle. And that value comes out to 50 meters per second up in the y direction. So that forces us to make gravity negative. So this is basically a free fall question for anything in the y direction. So we've already done this. Uh, we just took a quiz over it. And it should be something that we should be able to handle. So uh, we know that the... Um, went blank there for a minute. We know that the velocity in the, uh, at the top is zero meters per second. So when it reaches the top, it pauses or it stops. The object comes to a zero velocity at the top. So we can solve it uh, by automatically getting rid of v the final velocity squared. So V equals zero, and we get rid of that. And then we subtract V naught squared from both sides. When we move it over, basically the negative is on the outside of the parentheses, so it's going to happen to after the object, or after the calculation of v naught squared. And here we're going to divide by 2g and move it over. So what we end up with is that the change in y equals negative, parentheses v naught squared, divided by 2g, or 2a, so 2 times gravity. When we solve that, we get 50 squared, and that's going to be negative, divided by 2 times negative 10. And then the reason we leave the negative outside the parentheses is so that we end up with a positive number, negative divided by negative, which comes out to 125 meters. Um, and that's basically solving a free fall question, finding out how high something's going to go. It's basically exactly like a free fall, throwing it up in the air, and it comes right back down. The next thing we're going to determine is how far. Well, we know that gravity is 10 meters per second squared, and that the initial velocity going up is 10 meters per second, or 50 meters per second up, and we know that the change in y is zero meters. And since the vo uh, velocity and acceleration components are in opposite directions, we had to give negative 10 for gravity, and uh, we solve for time. Now, before we get moving too far, the reason we solve for time is we can't determine anything out without time uh, unless we're asking for how high, as you just saw. We, anything in the x direction, we're going to need time. So we have to find time first. We're going to go ahead and knock that out and get time using change in y equals v naught t plus 1 half at squared. We're going to simplify that equation. We're changing y equals v naught t plus 1 half at squared. Changing y is 0, which we know because it's going to end up in the exact same spot. It went up and came right down, back down in the same spot. And then we're going to subtract v naught t from both sides. You can see when we do that, we have t on both sides, so we can cancel out a t and a square, and then multiply by 2 to get rid of the half. Rewrite our equation, and then divide by a. Once we do that, we realize that we, uh, we have t squared left, and we have to get rid of that square. So rewrite our equation, see the square, and square root both sides to get rid of the square. So time equals negative 2 times the initial velocity divided by the acceleration, and square rooted. So plugging in our numbers, negative 2 times 50 divided by negative 10 and then square root that and our time should be 10 seconds. So now that we have our time we can go solve x direction uh, for the projectile and how we do that we look at the top view and if you look at the top view 
what happens is the object starts in one location and then goes, you're looking at it at the top, so you're hovering above this projectile and it starts in one location and just travels straight into another location. You don't see it going up and back down. All you see is maybe the ball getting bigger, but you don't see it going up and back down. You just see it traveling in a solid straight direction, which we're going to call the x-direction. And its velocity in that direction doesn't change, so we have a constant velocity. That means if our velocity is constant, our acceleration is 0 meters per second squared in the x-direction. And our velocity in the x-direction can be found by doing uh, the hypotenuse, which is 100, times the cosine of 30 degrees, which comes out to 86.6 meters per second. Since it's constant, it doesn't have to be v naught or v final. It's just v x for x direction. Uh, now that we have, we know we have time, uh, and we know that we have velocity, and acceleration is zero. So using the equation change in x equals v naught t plus one half a t squared, the acceleration is zero, which allows us to get rid of that term. And then we rewrite the equation as change in x equals v naught t, which is basically 86.6 times 10 seconds and we get 866 meters. So this is the process of solving for those two particular variables, um, how far or how high. Uh, it, it, we can ask a whole lot more questions on this, but the key is separating things out into x and y components. Um, we're going to do a lot of practice with this in class. But let's talk through some more things. What I have here is I have a projectile being shot at some angle, and it's going to travel in its path, it's a parabolic path, and land at the exact same height it was launched from. And we have the initial velocity being v naught. So what I'm doing here is creating a triangle with some angle theta. When we're solving for this, in order to find the velocity in the x direction, okay, the angle, uh, or the side that we're looking for is adjacent to the angle. So we're going to end up using cosine. And uh, most of y'all know that cosine equals the adjacent over the hypotenuse. What we do to find the adjacent side, and we want velocity in the x direction, it is the adjacent side. We have to multiply both sides by the hypotenuse, which happens to be v naught, and we're left with v naught times cosine theta equals the adjacent side, which is velocity initial in the x direction. So doing that quickly, Without showing a whole lot of any work, I know that v naught cosine theta is my velocity in the x direction. And then v naught y would be the exact same thing, so v naught sine theta, because it's the angle is opposite, so we use sine. The side we're looking for is opposite the angle. Um, and we know in the x direction that the acceleration equals zero. So what we're talking about here, if the acceleration is zero, that means v naught cosine theta is a constant value. No matter what happens, at any point during this parabolic path, the velocity in the x direction will be v naught cosine theta. It will be the same magnitude, v naught cosine theta. Even at the top of it, it has a velocity in the x direction of v naught cosine theta. Halfway through, third of the way through, seven-eighths of the way through, it doesn't matter. It's v naught cosine theta. Now, in the y direction, we have gravity, which is 10 meters per second squared down. And it is uh, going to stay constant. It's a constant number for us. So gravity is acceler or acceleration due to gravity is 10 meters per second squared at every point throughout this whole parabolic path of this projectile shot at an angle. So you can see I'm trying to draw the same size arrow at every location. It is constantly 10 meters per second squared. But velocity is affected by gravity. And you can see I'm drawing up here all the way up to the top the velocity in the y direction actually is slowing down all the way up to the top. It comes off of the foot. It shot out of a cannon up in the air. Whatever caused the object to take off in the air, as soon as it leaves the force that caused it to take off that direction, we have a maximum velocity the moment it leaves. So velocity in the y direction is going to be v naught sine theta. And the moment it leaves, gravity begins to act on it as well. So everywhere along this parabolic path, up to the top, it is slowing down. So you can see the vector getting shorter and shorter and shorter. I'm drawing smaller arrows. But then on the way down, gravity is acting down and the velocity is acting down. And we have the arrows getting bigger and bigger and bigger 
which means that it's speeding up back down toward the ground. So velocity in the y direction is v naught sine theta at the beginning, and it's the exact same value at the end. The velocity in the y direction will be v naught sine theta. So let's talk about the important notes to take away from projectiles at an angle. The first note is that the velocity in the x direction is constant. That's the first thing to take away. The next thing is that velocity in the y direction is changing because gravity is affecting it. On the way up, it's slowing it down. On the way down, it's speeding you up. So it's changing because of gravity. And the last thing is that gravity is a constant 9.8 meters per second squared, and we're going to use 10 in class. And those are the key points to take away from any projectile launched uh, up in the air at an angle. Uh, even if it's launched straight up, the x direction is constant. If it's launched straight up, uh, there's no x velocity, so it's constantly zero. So it doesn't matter which projectile it is, the velocity in the x direction is constant, the velocity in the y direction is changing because of gravity, and then gravity is a constant 9.8 meters per second squared toward the center of the Earth, and we're going to use 10 in class. Uh, I look forward to practicing with you guys in class, and let me know if you have any questions.